In this lecture, we're going to examine an important instrument that essentially allowed us to study the properties of electrons, and this instrument is known as the cathode ray tube. Now, a cathode ray tube is essentially a particle accelerator. It allows us to accelerate electrons through a region of space. So let's examine the following diagram, which essentially is our cathode ray tube. So on the left end of our tube, we essentially have a high voltage difference. And as a result of this high electric potential difference, electrons are accelerated through the following region of space. Now, this region of space is essentially a vacuum and that allows our electron to travel through the following region undeflected. Now, if there is no electric field and if there is no magnetic field, this electron will essentially travel in the following straight pathway, hitting this position Y. And that electron can be detected on the following screen. Now, we also have a set of parallel plates, and these parallel plates create a separation of electric charge. And as a result of that separation of electric charge, that creates an electric field. So when our electron travels through this region of space that contains an electric field, an electric force will act on our moving charge, and that will deflect our electron, as we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, these coils of wire essentially carry an electric current and moving electric current creates a magnetic field. So there is a magnetic field in this region also and that magnetic field can exert a magnetic force on our moving electric charge which can also be used to deflect our electron. And by deflecting our electrons we can essentially study the properties of our electron as we'll see in just a moment, we can actually calculate what our charge to mass ratio is of our electron. So, once again, the cathode ray tube consists of an evacuated tube in which electrons are accelerated as a result of a high voltage difference. Now, as electrons travel through our tube, their pathway can be deflected using either electric fields produced by our two parallel plates or by magnetic fields produced by our coil wires which contain our electric current. So, let's begin our study of the electron by removing our coils. Suppose we only have an electric field that is produced by our two parallel plates. So the electric field lines will begin on the positive region and will end on the negative region. And that basically means when our electron reaches this position, it will be deflected towards our positive end. And that's because we have a negative charge, a positive charge here. And so our electron will tend to gravitate to this side. So eventually, we'll be able to detect our electron on this position of our screen. Let's call that position X. So now let's suppose we turn off our electric field and we turn on our electric current in the wire so that now we have a magnetic field but we don't have an electric field. So what exactly will happen to our electron in the absence of an electric field when our electric field is equal to zero? So suppose only a magnetic field B exists in this region and that magnetic field points into the board. So if we use right hand rule number three, we can essentially determine the direction of the magnetic force that will act on our electron as a result of that magnetic field produced by the electric current in these coil wires. So we essentially take our right hand, we point it in the direction of our electron's motion, so our velocity is this way, we coil our, or we curl our hand 
spin in the direction of our magnetic field which points into the board and then we extend our thumb and because this is a negative charge we flip our thumb so that means our force the magnetic force as a result of that magnetic field will point downward and that means our electron will deflect to location Z on our screen. So, now let's actually apply Newton's second law of motion to determine the charge per mass ratio of our electron. So, the net force acting on the electron in the absence of the electric field is equal to mass times A. Now, because the only force is our magnetic force, this force becomes Q, the charge on the electron, multiplied by V, the velocity of the electron electron multiplied by B, the magnitude of our magnetic field, and that is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration. In this case, our acceleration is our centripetal acceleration. So A is equal to V squared divided by R, where R is the radius of curvature. The radius of curvature tells us how much our electron deflects from its straight position, position y. So we can essentially take this equation, rearrange it, and calculate what the charge to mass ratio of the electron is. So the charge to mass ratio is given by taking the velocity and dividing it by our b multiplied by r. So notice that B is a quantity that we know initially and R, we can measure it by measuring this deflection. So if we know what the velocity is, we can calculate what the charge to mass ratio is. Likewise, if we take this equation, rearrange it, we can solve for the radius of curvature. The radius of curvature is equal to mv divided by q times b. So now let's move on to this step. Let's suppose not only do we have a magnetic field, but we also turn on our plate. So now we also have an electric field. So what will happen to our electron in the presence of an electric and magnetic field? So we essentially want to use this result to calculate what the velocity is. So then we can plug that number into this equation and that will give us our charge to mass ratio of the electron. So, suppose we adjust the electric field just right so that the magnetic field counterbalances the electric field as the electron travels through the following position. So, if the magnetic field is just right and the electric field is just right, the electric force will be exactly equal to our magnetic force. So electric force points up, our magnetic force points downward, and so that means if, if these forces are equal, that means our electron will travel in the following direction. So let's suppose the magnetic force is equal to the electric force. So the magnetic force is QVB and the electric force is Q multiplied by E. So we can essentially cross out these charges and solve for the velocity. We we see that the velocity of our electron as it travels in the following straight pathway is equal to the electric field in that region divided by the magnetic field in that region. And these two values are essentially constants. So if we take these values and plug that into our velocity, we see that our charge to mass ratio of the electron Q divided by M is equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field squared multiplied by R. So these values are constants and if we plug them in we calculate what the charge to mass ratio is. Now if we use the results from the oil drop experiment, we can use those results and this result to essentially determine what the actual quantity of charges and mass on our electron. So the cathode ray tube is a very important instrument because it allowed us to determine the quantity of charge and mass on a single electron.